Hey guys, welcome to my Guild Wars 2 review of Heart of Thorns as well as Living World 1 through 3. But before we get started, I want to thank you guys for taking time out of your day to click this video and I hope you enjoy it. Let's get into it. Let's start first by emphasizing that I do enjoy the game, the story and the characters. I will be delving into spoilers in this review from Living World 1 through 3 as well as Heart of Thorns, so if that's not something you want to know, feel free to, kill, to click away, but I would say my opinion overall of Heart of Thorns as well as the Living Worlds is overwhelmingly positive. And the shortcomings I will be talking about in this video are not as big of a deal as I will likely make it out to be because I have a knack to be overly dramatic when I am passionate about stuff. I also won't be covering gameplay in this one as nothing has really changed since my review of Guild Wars 2, so I will be focusing more about the story, the zones, and character interactions, things like that. With that being said, I'll cover the good parts first. The Night Cycle and the Maguma zones were pretty cool. Basically get some base defense events all over the place, though some nights were a bit of a miss. Some nights you would get so many players across many bases, maxing out their defenses and protecting them, it felt pretty good to be a part of it. And some nights you would be alone against a horde of zombie plants and, uh, you know, shit hits the fan pretty fast. <laughs> Now, let's talk about story villains, because as we all know, the hero is only as good as the villain they are fighting. So let's start with Living World Season 1's main villain, Scarlet. A genius that went a bit naughty, just a tiny bit, and due to her actions, awakened Mordremoth, the second dragon we will face in Heart of Thorns. Everything about this character was good enough. I wouldn't say this is the best villain ever, but this villain did play a good role of the mad scientist that, if not stopped, would bring about the end of the world if left unchecked. The main characters that you interact with, rocks. Look at how wide those eyes are. <laughs> what a face, bro. Her, her eyes are wandering like crazy, man. They're moving back and forth. God damn. Marjorie and Casimir, which by the way had like the best introduction in my opinion because I just love that hard-boiled stuff. <laughs> oh my god. Hard-boiled. Some of the time. Marjorie Delacroix? If it suits you. It suits me just fine. I want to hire you. You've got a murder. Oh, it's good. So Theo Ashford is dead. And I want to know who's responsible. Sounds like a job for the lion guard. What's got you peaked? Between you and me, Ashford's an old friend of the family. I want to make sure they find this killer. I see. And you don't trust the lion guard. Let's just say I'm hedging my bets. The pay's good. You in? How can I say no to Captain Lowe? No names. I was never here. <laughs> Maybe not. But your money is. I'm in. <laughs> Lady Casimir, what are you doing in a place like this? Good to see you. Yeah, what's up, bro? How's it going? <laughs> Timey, which... Uh... Took me a while to for took a while for her to grow on me because I didn't really like her at first, but you know, she she grows on you and actually like a pretty chill, uh, a pretty good character. Good job, fucking professors! You almost killed this girl, idiot old man. <laughs> Hang on, Timey. We're coming. I feel good. Oh, no. <laughs> 
Stay away from my girl. Tommy, you okay, kid? Ram, Ram, they were all around me. I, I, I thought. <laughs> hey, hey, now. You're okay. You're fine. They're all gone. We've got your back. You're safe now. <laughs> what are they doing here? And then we have the good for nothing asshole, Bram. Oh man, I have a lot to say about Bram, but uh, yeah, we'll talk about that a bit <laughs> later. Over now. Rox and I need to keep moving. Okay, let's go. Sure. Yeah, sure. And they were all pretty well introduced and joined up with you for your journey up until basically end of Heart of Thorns, after which kind of just disappeared for majority of Living World 3. You only really worked with Timey for Living World 3. Bram is mad at you. Rox is babysitting Bram. Timey is working with you. Marjorie went to do her own thing. And Kaz just disappeared for no real reason. So, I mean... She whatever nobility stuff but like i don't know why but either way like Cass is always there only when marjorie is there so it is what it is and by far right now my favorite characters are rocks because come on like i mean look look at that face I mean, how can you not like rocks uh rithlock uh who is a bit of a tsundere but also a badass that's tribute to you soldier not anymore it's not Oh, here we go. <laughs> We've ignored numerous requests from the Black Citadel to account for your time in the mists and explain this new magic. Thus, you've been stripped of your rank and are hereby charged with dereliction of duty. You're to come with us, Ridlock, sir. <laughs> and if I don't... We've been authorized to use force. But we'd hate to cause a scene. I'm sure you would. It's like bad cop, good cop. <laughs> Getting this assignment, you two must either be the best warriors in the Iron Legion or the ones with the worst <laughs> luck. So, which one is it? Top of my class, but it's starting to feel like both. <laughs> Ritlock, it's okay, Commander. I'll straighten this out. It appears I underestimated the Citadel's response. <laughs> oh, god. Hope you enjoy the medal I'm earning you today, soldier. You get to return with Ridlock Brimstone in tow. <laughs> Without a fight? <laughs> Depends on my travel accommodations. <laughs> uh, you can have my seat. Oh my god, Come on, it's nice. You gonna groom him too? <laughs> Sorry I'll miss out on all the fun. And even though I didn't like her at first, like I said, timey kind of grew on me. I think it was about the time when Ashead Flunt decided it was a good idea to attack her. I mean, seriously, how is that guy even a counselor? Like, <laughs> oh man. Marjorie and Casimir are okay. I wouldn't say I care too much about them. I think they're fine, but also if they were missing, I wouldn't care too much. And Bram, man, holy. Let's just say I'd be totally happy if he went and got himself killed somewhere. This guy. We'll talk about it more uh, later on. <laughs> I'm also pretty happy that the game isn't afraid to kill off characters, but... Well, we'll talk about that as well, okay? So that would be pretty much all the positive stuff that I have to say. Now, we'll go into the stuff that I'm not too happy about. My biggest pet peeve with Heart of Thorns was having to do story to unlock masteries. To continue the story this of course is more of an issue because i was trying to stream the game but this is also an issue because it really takes you out of the story for a good amount of time it makes logical sense why you would need these masteries to continue the story as these masteries unlock interactions with the environment which you would need in order to do the quest what bothers me is that i couldn't just go and do the masteries first and then do the story after so that I could keep the story flow smooth and just enjoy it non-stop without being taken out of it. And as far as I understand, this will also be a small issue during Path of Fire due to the Mount Masteries, but anyway, it is what it is. 
As far as the pacing of the story, I feel like the main story was paced properly. Heart of Thorns might have felt a bit short, especially after the living worlds taking substantially longer and overall the majority of it made sense. With that out of the way, let's get down to the nitty gritty. Heart of Thorns zones suck a massive donger. Up until you get Masteries and probably Path of Fire Mounts, which makes the Masteries all the more meaningful and make the world more interesting, it did feel at times like the zone itself was too annoying, like small area where you'd have to dismount and remount just to get through a small gap in the wall. Then again, I mean, the zone was made before the mounts were introduced, so that can't be helped. It was just a bit annoying. The place is a goddamn maze, though. I pride myself on being pretty good at directions and knowing where I'm where I am and how to get to where I want to go specifically in games but also even in the real world but oh man let me tell you Maguma and later on living worlds uh living world 3's volcano zone man I had to take a few deep breaths to calm myself before rage quitting with all the up and down run around glide here glide there needed good in the devs for making the player really think about where to go but also that was a mental fatigue and speaking of mental fatigue the whole Heart of Thorns expansion felt like a mental fatigue. After analyzing multiple times, I have reached the conclusion why I couldn't sit through a whole living world or the expansion in one sitting was not due to time restraint. It is because it was too goddamn exhausting. Don't get me wrong, I like a good challenge here and there, but with Heart of Thorns, everything was a challenge to an extent. Going from point A to point B required thinking, focus, almost dying a few times, maybe even dying a few times. Then all the combat requires me to always use pretty much all of my abilities, often lasting too long, specifically boss fights. You need to have proper positioning all the time, properly dodging the enemy, and sometimes even use defensives to not die to the random frog archer that goes stealth and nukes me for half or more of my HP. And this is just random mobs in the world, this is not even like... A boss, it's not an elite mob, this is just random world mobs just doing way too much fucking damage. It's cool to have hard content, don't get me wrong. But holy hell man, there was no time to relax during Heart of Thorns. Everything was a challenge and a battle for my character's life. This is good because it keeps you engaged with the game you're playing, but this is also sucks because sometimes you just want to unwind a bit, you know, sit back, relax, and just kill some shit. But you can't. Not in Heart of Thorns. It's really, really tough to find the time when you can just relax. I do hope that Path of Fire eases up on the amount of crazy combat tactics needed because I don't want to sound cocky or anything, but I'm not a horrible player. I'm actually fairly decent. And all I could think about was, thank God I have more than two decades worth of gaming, especially MMO and Souls games, because some of the things that you're supposed to fight in, in just the story, are insanely hard and some of them even reset your checkpoint having you do the fight from the beginning i can see many players that are new to the genre and the combat system really struggling with this expansion and especially living world 3 specifically the last boss but yeah this expansion just requires a lot of uh, out of the player and i do not expect people who are new to mmrpgs to have a really really good time now in terms of the story, I found Heart of Thorns to be very anticlimactic. Yeah, the fight was more engaging than, say, Zaitan. But I found Zaitan to be a more epic fight story-wise than Mordremoth. I found it weird that we even beat Mordremoth at all. At any moment, he could have just severed the link to Traherne and we would kind of be done, be fucked. Also, compared to pretty much everything else in the expansion... Mordremoth was probably the easiest fight I had, including just fighting tra some trash mobs. The other issue I found was that I just didn't care much that Traherne died. Lord Marshal, quickly now. Use it on me. Kill me, Commander. What? No, Mordremoth is dead. We destroyed its mind from the no, inside. No, no, no. He's there. He's there to but replace I still him. Hear its voice. Yeah. Modrimoth is alive. One last hateful vestige. A terrible seed planted deep in my mind. You must kill me, Commander. 
before that seed grows, before Mordromoth reclaims what it has lost. What's left of me can't survive on its own. Strike now, or... I am the future. I am this world. You cannot destroy me. Run while you can. I won't let all this be for nothing. Stand back. I'm ending this. Now. Yeah, we had that whole bromance thing going in the original game, but I had nothing to do with him for two living worlds. So basically, like that was like almost a month of content, pretty much all of Heart of Thorns until he basically asks us to kill him. It is a shame we didn't get to play with Jahern more. I feel like he had a lot of potential to give some emotional damage if we did. Speaking of dead characters, Air died, and honestly, I didn't care so much about her dying as much as I wanted that Silvari that killed her dead. Regardless of air, I want Fel in dead. Guild Wars 2 sure makes you not like the villains more so than liking your allies. Which is kinda funny. Good. Fucker. We have to keep moving. I like my chances better. This way. Fucking knew it. Good fucker. Good. Piece of shit. Oh. No, come on. Well, she doesn't have her wolf, I guess. Mm. Oh. No. Oh, oh, fuck. And since we already brought up air, let's talk about this idiot, Bram. <sighs> There's only one good thing I have to say about Bram. His armor set in Living World 3 looks pretty damn good. How's the hunt for the scroll going? Almost at its end. Or maybe a frustrating beginning. If it's not in this cave system, this all is my sick armor. Wrong, and, I'm back. and that's about everything. Who the fuck does he think he is? First off, I get you're upset you lost your mommy. But holy fuck, man, not only do you have the worst tantrum I've seen since kindergarten, not only are you an ungrateful piece of shit, not only do you barely listen to your friends, co-workers, partners, I know what we are anyways, not only do you put rocks in danger, you fucking absolute muppet, but also, you're not even justified in your anger. Yeah, straight up, man. Honestly, fuck this guy. We don't, we don't need him on our team. I mean, he has a cool armor, but like, with how fucking pissy he is right now, man. Like, honestly, grow the fuck up. We've all had shit to deal with, okay? Like, look at Marjorie, okay? He fucking lost a sister who was, like, a lot closer to her than you with your mom. Fucking man child. Oh, I lost my mommy. I lost my mommy. She died a warrior's death, bro. Get over it. It's here. Bram, you can't. Let's hold up a second here. 
or not. I'll take that. Thanks. Ugh. Ram, oh. move. Stop. Ram, she's frozen solid. Stay out of that thing's way. <laughs> what it's happened? Fucked up. You were frozen. I was frozen? So weird. It was like a dream and I was on a beach. You'd think it'd be the opposite. <laughs> well, we're glad you're back. Did we get the scroll? Sure did, Rox. Thanks. And now? This is similar to the scroll Azgir used in his great victory. So now I test the bow on the tooth in the Great Hall. If I damage it, it's time to rally the Norn and lay Jormag to rest. Bram, you can't... <sighs> Let's hold up a second here. A direct assault on Jormag puts a lot of lives on the line. I think the Pact can tell you that may not be the best idea. The Pact you commanded. Look, Jormag is my problem. Bro, and I'll this deal with it fucking my way, guy. With or without you. Jormag isn't just your... Look what happened to Rox when you rushed in and bashed something. Oh, I forgot your calculated plans always work out perfectly. Like when you posed as a Spanier to get some potion. Okay, okay. Can we back up? Timey thinks there may be a way to pit Primordus and Jormag against each other without raising a single sword. Timey thinks, huh? If the tooth chips, we have hard proof. Hard proof of what? That you can battle a tooth? <laughs> so only you get to decide when we take down oh a dragon? Oh my god. Only you are allowed to kill them? That's not what I'm saying. Yeah, well, figure this guy. out what you're saying because that's what it sounds like. I'm only asking you to wait, maybe just a few days. See if Timey can do this. There could be no need to put lives at risk. With every moment we wait, someone else's mother dies. Uh... I won't give Jormag a few days. I won't give Jormag a few minutes. The Norn elders told me the legend of the tooth, but I've also been out in the world and faced two of these things, one with you. They're not to be taken lightly. You think I take it? You know what, Commander? I'm glad you didn't join Destiny's Edge. My mother wouldn't want oh you. I'm headed back to Holbrek. Garm, to me. This piece of shit never met his mom. When he asked her for help, she turned him down. I was the one who ended up helping him save his village. I was the one who helped him take care of the Flame Legion. We worked together to stop Scarlet. And at no point did he ever have any real contact with Air throughout all of this. There was a small interac interaction he had with Air, like the one interaction really, where Air basically says she would like to be more of a mom to him once this Mordremoth business is over. And then she died. So this stupid walnut for a brain loses his shit, starts doing shit on his own, basically blaming me, the main character, for Air's death, puts dear sweet rocks in danger almost gets her killed in a block of ice and then because he doesn't want to listen nor wait could have caused the end of the world if we didn't put Jormag and Primordius back to sleep. I can be somewhat understanding of this clown like yeah okay start of Heart of Thorns you see the devastation your main goal is to go save dear old mommy but what would happen if let's say we just rushed through to the end where air was held with no plan of action? and ignore the plight of all the other packed soldiers that are stranded in the jungle. Even if we did save, save Air, do you think Air would be like, oh, thank you so much for saving and abandoning all those people to their fate. Good work, guys. True heroes. And also, if that's what he wanted to do, no one was keeping you tied to us. Go explore on your own. No one was holding him back. You don't want to be a team player? Fuck it. Just go. Who cares? No one needs a selfish team member that can get them killed because of their impatience. I can go on and on about Bram being a potato head, but honestly, let's talk about this whole concept of my team. Now, I found it pretty weird that they were calling me commander, not realizing it was just my title because I don't remember anyone signing up to be my subordinate. I thought we were somewhat equal in our relationship and we're just working together. But for some reason, I started giving out orders to them when we got to Heart of Thorns, found that found that a bit confusing, even though I can think of a couple of reasons this was the case. For once, Maguma Jungle was a packed operation, and I have duties as a commander of the pack, so even though these teammates are not my subordinates, I guess while we're on a packed mission, I have the role of a leader, or the only other explanation I can think of 
was that they signed up at some point and I just wasn't aware of it, which wouldn't make much sense as later I'm trying to invite them to Dragon Watch. So clearly we never had such a relationship to begin with, just a group of misfits basically. What I'm trying to say is the relationship between me and the main character, me, the main character and these NPCs was never really solidified at this moment and felt a bit confusing as to like what my role in this group is, what their role is, what like what are we to each other, just co-workers, are we friends, are we a, like a guild, like we are the new, what do you call it? Well, now we're he's try I'm trying to make Dragon's Watch, but like Divinity's Edge, are we like the new Divinity's Edge kind of thing, which kind of, you had the vibe that we're trying to make a new Divinity's Edge to take over like those old guys that are like just like, you know, retiring or dying, whatever. So you do get that feel, but at no point do you, f like, it was weird. It was just a very weird interaction because we were not there yet, you know? We were just building this whole connection between us. And the thing is, it's like, because my only point of comparison for this is really like world uh, is Final Fantasy, right? Where it's just like you join this organization, then eventually you kind of, you're not even the leader of the organization, but you are the main fighting force of the organization. But everyone still kind of listens to you, but everyone has their own role and stuff like that. No one is really a leader, Right, everyone. Someone is coordinating this. Someone is in charge of this and stuff like that. And I didn't feel that in Guild Wars Two. It was a very weird relationship where it's like everyone's kind of doing what they want to do, but a lot of times we have a common goal, so we go and do it together. But as as far as like who's in charge or whatever, the, at any situation was kind of like arbitrary. Uh, okay. Anyways, speaking of NPCs. Guild Wars 2 does a rather poor job of making you care about random NPCs you meet that later end up dying, leaving you with not a care in the world. A perfect example of this would be Demi Biddlestone. And if you don't know who she is, I don't blame you. She's Codicus's daughter. And if you don't know who Codicus is, he's this minister traitor who turned white mantle and we beat the shit out of him. Now, why don't I expect you to know who these people are? Because I just finished the story and I already forgot who they were. I actually had to go to the wiki to find their names again. But apparently Demi has a bigger role if you chose the Order of Whispers storyline during your Guild Wars 2 leveling story. But if you didn't, she's just a stranger that dies in front of you and some NPCs cry over her dead body while you're just, I don't know, standing there staring at the wall because you couldn't care less about her because you don't know her. Just as one example of how some characters' story arcs just don't matter to you because you never spend time getting to know these characters. Or even if you do, they disappear for a whole expansion only to appear for a brief moment and die. I mean, it's kind of hard to relate. That that one was kind of referring to Traherne, but yeah. Oh, also, uh, Aurin is cute. <laughs> it's like, I guess. <laughs> but yeah. Aw, look at this guy. Anyways, guys, that's it from me. If you stay and watch all the way to the end, please consider smashing that like button or the sub button. If you don't like it, dislike it. If you have something to say, please feel free to leave a comment. And thank you very much for spending your time here. And I'll see you in the next one. Take care.